Well, hi all. Today is about what day? February 17th, where we uh, go from Milford Sound to Queenstown. So we have early morning time on the boat, transfer and go to Queenstown. So um, we're up early at 645 to see the sunrise over the Tasman Sea. The boat goes back out through the sound, out to the Tasman Sea, and uh, we get some pictures of the sunrise as it climbs above the mountain. On the way back, the captain stopped at a few different places in the sound. One was a fracture line. We can actually see where the earth is fractured and two different uh, plates come together. That is really cool. Uh, we saw some seals sunning themselves on a rock. That was neat. And then there was a waterfall and he said he would pull up to the waterfall so we could get good pictures. And he did. He pulled up right almost into the waterfall and there was water spraying everywhere. Uh, and that was fun. It was really cool. Uh, let's see, then we also saw another cruise ship, a Holland American Nordham cruise ship. And uh, then we disembarked and they gave us a quick ride to the airport, which is not a big airport. And um, they said it's, it was a super, one of the busiest airports in New Zealand because flights are coming and going all the time to, um, to the ships in Milford Sound. And that was true. While we waited for our plane to come in, there were all kinds of small commuter planes arriving and disembarking, people disembarking. And then uh, while we waited for our plane, we also took a short walk and we have some nice views from that walk, a short walk by the airport. So uh, then on to the airplane once it arrived. Jim, do you want to take over? Yeah, once the airplane had arrived, we split our group into twos. Uh, so there was like seven people on each airplane. And the airplane seat sat 13 people. They were Cessnas. Um, and uh, so we had lots of room in there. We, had, we each had a window seat. Terry looked out the left and I looked out the right. Um, and, and, and so we saw somewhat different things. After we took off, uh, one of the things that we could do is look back at Milford Sound and look all the way out to the sea. Uh, we also, once we started flying, of course, we were flying at kind of this intermediate altitude so that oftentimes there were peaks that were higher than us and, uh, and yet we were flying over other peaks and, of course, rivers and things like that. So, so we could go ahead and, and you're probably seeing a video right now uh, where we could look up at the peaks as we were flying and, and down on some lakes and rivers below us. You know, 
different short video. We also show looking down uh, and the clouds in the valleys below us and snow on the mountain top. In another, we also could look down, we saw the Teanu to Milford Highway, which was running along by some lakes. Um, when Terry looked to the north, uh, she could see more peaks with snow on them than when I looked to the south. And that's because when I looked to the south, I had north-facing peaks and the sun would melt the snow off. And when Terry looked to the north, she saw south-facing peaks and that didn't melt the sun off. We, as we flew along, we eventually came to Lake Wakatipu, which is the lake. It's a long, long, narrow mountain lake. It's 125 kilometers long that Queenstown is on. And we circled around part of the lake and came in, and you could see how Queenstown was spreading out into almost suburbs and, and, and some of the big homes that are here. I think Shania Twain has a home here. Do you remember who else he said? I don't Hugh remember. Jackman, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Something like that. Anyways, we landed uneventfully and disembarked from the plane and got into a bus. And because we were early and couldn't check in, we went to this other community called Arrowtown. And Arrowtown was founded as a Chinese settlement during the gold rush of 1880, 1860s to 1880s. Right. So those huts were in a really primitive condition. They had redone some of the huts, and they were in a really primitive uh, condition. Not all of them even had a heat source. Some of them had uh, like a, a mud fireplace that had been built inside of it, uh, but very tiny, very tiny, almost only room for sleeping. Um, and while the Chinese had been invited, because it was a believed they were hard workers, once they were here, they faced uh, racism and exclusion and fear that they would uh, be able, their industriousness would uh, overshadow the other people that were here or New Zealanders that were here. So. They were pretty much excluded, which is why they built their own, had their own village. So after that short tour of the Chinese, early Chinese settlement, we walked up Arrow, up the slope to Arrowtown, and there we stopped at a New Zealand bakery, and we had meat pies. And those meat pies were so much better than the other meat pies we had had. Um, and I had venison, which they do raise venison here. And so I wanted to try that. I had a venison pie and Jim had, uh, you had steak and cheese, I think. Right? I had just mincemeat. Mincemeat pie, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were both good, I can verify, because I ate a little bit of his. <laughs> uh, and then we went to use the bathrooms here, which is gonna be in another segment. We're gonna talk about bathrooms in New Zealand. But they were basically electronic bathrooms. You get in and out by pushing electronic buttons, etc. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Never seen anything like it. So I think you'll find that interesting. Do you have anything else to add, Jim? No. Okay. Well, love. Yep. Love you. Bye. Bye.